Hello, everybody, and welcome to the White Hatter YouTube News Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm Darren. Uh, today on the show, we're talking about Facebook attacking other apps. We're talking about tracking and stealing cars using AirTags. Mm -hmm. We're talking about family safety apps may not be as private uh, as you may yep. think they are. Oh, and uh, Twitter's new policy is um, having some unintended consequences. It's almost as if we had a crystal ball for a couple of these topics we're going to be talking about today. Let's get into the news show, shall we? Do, 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 do. In the news. First topic here in the news show is uh, Instagram's <laughs> head tells Congress the other apps are also bad for kids too. So uh, they had a congressional hearing. The uh, Instagram head sat down asked, and we answered some questions. And they basically... Grilled. He was grilled. <laughs> and they basically asked, they, they stated... Um, Instagram is not the only app kids use, and they claim that other apps like YouTube and Snapchat have far larger amounts of young people on them, which is a weird thing for them to say that their competitors have more students on them, but yeah, I, I know mean, what they're trying to do here. I mean, they're trying to, that right now, there's no doubt that the spotlight is on them, right? Because of the leaks that happened and all this stuff, right? So, yeah. and they're the biggest platform, right? Mm -hmm. The meta, 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 meta platform, which is Facebook, Instagram, uh, WhatsApp, you know, all owned by Facebook, who's now meta, 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 right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're just doing some finger pointing as well to say, hey, listen, it's not just us, right? It's these other platforms. And to a degree, they have a point. I mean, <laughs> to a degree, they have a point. If they didn't go ahead and do this terrible research, this wouldn't be a part of the, this wouldn't be a debate. Yeah, it's quite interesting, right? Like some of the things that were leaked, uh, those in academia, the good academics are looking at this going just to let you know, like a lot of the research, we're not saying that it's not pertinent yeah. and that there's some important topics that need to be discussed. But the way they conducted the research was less than desirable from an academic standpoint. Yeah. But, I mean, there there is no doubt that the Instagram uh, head did does have a point to say, well, you know, it's not just us, it's these other platforms as well. Yeah, but the reality is you're on the hot seat right now. So what are you doing about it? Now, so they stated that they've been advocating for regulation for the last three years, and they yeah. stated that during during the hearings. Yeah, well, they, they, why not just do it yourself? Why wait for regulations? Why not just do it yourself, right? Anyways, but um, you came out with an interesting theory the other day about, you know, there's no doubt, and primarily because, I think there's two reasons. It's more like a conspiracy theory. But I yes, know, go on. I know, I, but for two, for two reasons. Uh, first reason is because what's happening with GDPR. I mean, there's no doubt that Europe... Yeah. And Great Britain are having huge cause and effect on getting these major platforms to change the way they're doing business online, especially yeah. from a privacy standpoint, or they face huge, huge monetary fines and not being allowed to operate. And, mm -hmm. and, and number two, because of what's going on with the Senate hearings right now, like it's it, it's kind of like this perfect storm of congruence, everything coming into place. But, you know, one of the interesting things is over the past probably couple months now, we've really seen a, 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 an effort on the park of Meta, Facebook, Instagram, all, all, all their conglomerate, mm -hmm. of making moves now to put things in place that they should have done years before, but they didn't, but now they are to make it more secure, more private. And you had this really good theory <laughs> as to the reason why. Let's share that. Well, I mean... <laughs> So I think you're right. As they stated that in the Senate hearing, that they've been advocating for privacy and regulation right. in the industry as a whole. Right. And this is the best case scenario for Facebook. Why? Because when you when you explain why, I kind of went, boy, I think you have a point. Looking at Meta, they are they are the biggest. For sure. Arguably one of the biggest. They have they have a huge foothold in the digital media ecosystem. Yes. And they got that way by doing unethical things. I would agree with you. So now the number Intentionally one. Intentionally and unintentionally. So now that the number one, if the market's now locked out, so now there's regulation, that would then mean newcomers in the space would have a harder time to get at the level of Facebook did in its time that it did to get to number one. So if Facebook starts advocating for regulation, it's going to lock out new apps because they're not going to compete. They can't compete. <laughs> so it's only and Facebook and Meta have the ability to make changes because they're already making all kinds of money from this stuff. And they own the biggest market share. So it, it's in their best interest to yeah. to regulate. You know, when you first brought that to my attention, I went, God, I think you're right. Right. It's right? In their when, best when, you, when you when you it is in their best interest. And that's why I think they're I think that may be another conspiracy theories. Where's our we got to get our tin hats <laughs> out. Right. But 
I mean, this may be why they're pushing, even when you watch TV ads that are now doing, like they're saying, hey, listen, Congress, change, put put legislation in place, change 230, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, um, make this happen. And I think the reason they're doing that is because they now know it gives them a strategic advantage, mm -hmm. right? Maybe that's one of the reasons why they're not doing it themselves now, although they're doing it now, that they're just putting the heat on because again, it will give them a market advantage. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's my running theory. Oh, and, and interesting theory. No matter what the outcomes are, Facebook wins. Yeah. Either it's open market, they can do what they want, or it's closed market, they maintain dominance. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Interesting. Interesting. Next one. <laughs> Next article. Apple AirTags dun, become a useful da, dun, tool dun. for Canadian carjackers. Now, we talked about this a couple of shows ago where we were talking about how uh, people who are leaving abusive relationships, the abusive partner, can use this technology to track where their partner's going if they're using a vehicle or put it into a purse to follow where they're going, right? So this article is now showing us that the criminal element is now doing it for the purposes of stealing cars. <laughs> so York Regional Police Department in Ontario, Canada uh, has said- That's they, our country. Yeah, that is our country. Oh, Canada. <laughs> they, they, they stated that they've had a number of instances where- What's our national sport? I don't know. Lacrosse. A lot of people think it's hockey. It's actually lacrosse. I was going to say soccer. No. Soccer. It's lacrosse. Anyways. We're here in BC. What's our golf. national bird? Canada goose. Oh. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Although we more What's the name of the boat on our dime? Bodie McBoatface? <laughs> it's the blue nose. Oh, God. These <laughs> millennials. Anyways, back on topic. All right, so Canadian air take. So uh, police department stated they have a number of incidences where carjackers were using little tiny air tags, uh, identifying the expensive way to do it. I know, <laughs> identifying. I'll talk about that. Yeah. Identifying uh, high value cars, putting an air tag on it covertly, and then tracking it, and then carjacking it when it's in an unsecured location. Makes sense. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> this is nothing new. Here we go. Here this we is go. nothing new, and you can get cheaper. Always on GPS, yeah. more accurate trackers on places like Amazon and spy websites for far cheaper than air tags. Yeah. So uh, maybe it's the criminal element not having the technological know-how in order to use a, GP a proper GPS tracker, which right. you can get for far cheaper. I'm not saying go do that. They're pretty simple. They're called but bird dogs. Right? I'm not saying go do that, but I'm saying, yeah, they're bigger, but I mean, underneath a car you're not going to find it anyways you know it's you know it, it is it is an issue right like it's identified here by police or theft theft rings right of uh, auto theft rings but i still think it's a bigger issue when it comes to personal privacy especially for those who are abused and leaving abusive relationships where a partner can use this technology now that because air tags are smaller yeah you could put it into a person's like you, you, yeah. it could be into a person's purse into or their wallet you know into clothing without them knowing it's yeah. there and then you can track where they're going yeah it's right? harder to put a full big gps tracker in someone's purse or clothing without them noticing yeah. so that's more of a concern definitely but for carjacking i'm kind of scratching my head going is this, really, cheaper is, this, is this the most efficient way in order to track a car? Yeah. No. Now, to be fair, Apple's looking at ways to um, have countermeasures yes. to this, right? Like they're, they're just recently, actually, they re reduced or released an update with respect to as you're going to your car, you'll be able to see on your phone if there's an AirPod close yeah, by. Yeah, that, that's right? in the 15.2 beta version. Or, yeah, yeah I don't think out, it's yeah. out yet, yeah, but, but it's in the coming. beta. Yeah, it's coming, right? So, yeah. yeah. So, interesting. Uh, some things to think about there. Next topic. This one's an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> All right. Popular family this safety app, Life360, yeah. reportedly, according to the article, is selling precise location of data to tens of tens of millions of users. I actually posted this on our Facebook page and it blew up, right? Because yeah. parents use this, right, to help yeah. uh, with their kids and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Not understanding. So, I'll let you talk about this. So, uh, according to the article, apparently, what they've gone from data leaks and interviews with people in Life360. 360 and the company what is life 360 life 360 is one of those uh family monitoring filtering apps that allow you to track your right. family communicate with your family right. it's a family protection safety right. app so what are they doing um, with it one such app who hasn't reached out to us to review their product go figure, go figure. um <laughs> so uh, apparently according to the article uh, 33 million people worldwide who use the app. Their data is being 33 million. million. Their data is being sold to marketing agencies, data collection agencies, which then use the data to then sell to other companies to precise location market to 
consumers. Right. Uh, people probably were kind of taken aback by this because they wouldn't think? they wouldn't think their family safety app was selling their family location private data to uh, marketing companies. But guess what? It's in their TOS. Yeah. It's in their terms of service. And uh, now, to be yeah. fair, there's a way to turn this function off, right? Like, mm -hmm. but it's it's on by default, so you have to purposely go in to push a button to say don't sell any of my information to anybody. It's it's an opt-in approach. In fact, what it should be, it should be an opt-in by default. That's what they should have it as. And yeah. then you make a decision to turn it on. Now to do it, it's, it's, it's uh, we posted on our uh, Facebook page, which is? The White Hatter. The well, White Hatter, White Hatter team's Yeah, White Hatter team on Facebook. And you'll we posted a link there and an article to show you how to go into Life360 to opt out of them selling this yep. stuff, right? So, so check it out on our Facebook page. No, but you shouldn't be surprised because again, yeah, the, the app hasn't reached out to us to review their product. No. Uh, and if I, I recall correctly, some families have suggested us to look into it. Yes. And I think they have a free version. Yeah. Which would make sense as to why they offer and they're selling data but in order to offset those costs. I think this applied to the app. Doesn't matter if it was a paid or uh, uh, our free version. Right? Matter, yeah, yeah, but the fact that they have a, I believe they have a, a, a well-functioning free version, right. which makes sense as to why they're this selling is why, data. You know, this is why reading the terms of service is so important. But the challenge with that, terms of service on these platforms are like 80 pages long of microprint mm -hmm. in which you need a bloody law degree to understand it. Or right? what, what, what was identified in this article and that the terms of service is so vague yeah. that you, it doesn't really hold any substance. It says, yeah, your data can be used, but it doesn't tell you how it's being used. Right. So I think that's one of the... This is an interesting one. This is a real big heads up for parents that are watching right now that are using Life360. Our recommendation is go in and turn the function off specific to the, allowing them the, the ability to sell this information. And to find out how to do that, head over to our Facebook page, the White Hatter team on Facebook, and we've got a posting there to show you how to do that. Yes. And our last article for the new show. <laughs> we predicted uh, this one last week on our show. <laughs> if you did into last week's show, we talked about how <laughs> Facebook is updating its policies where someone posts a photo <laughs> of you on their platform yeah. without your consent yeah. you can go in and request your photo to be removed yeah. we hypothesized last week that obviously this is going to be abused yeah. and lo and behold <laughs> look what happened so right how did it happen how right wing activists happen? openly weaponizing twitter's new private media policy um, so what were they doing <laughs> one one case example as highlighted here in the article uh is at an anti-mask rally um protest pro pro anti-mask yeah yeah. And, yeah so they anti yeah. Maskers, yeah and and anti -maskers. Anti -maskers. yeah so um where this was happening we got people in the public who were taking photos and videos and commenting on what they were experiencing going there's a protest happening uh watch out all this type of stuff and then afterwards these folks who were a part of the um uh, event decided to then go to twitter and then have their policy remove those photos and some people's accounts were then terminated or locked out because of violation of tos we where they on mass last week right coordinated and targeted uh using the policy twitter said they recognize the fact this is happening and they're reevaluating the policy to ensure it is being used as intended you, know, you would think an organization the size of twitter would have thought about this and unintended consequences like you you thought about it right away, right? Like, and that's why we brought it up last week. Because I, I actually think that this is a useful tool, right? I, I mm -hmm. do, I really do. But like with any tool, it can be used for good or bad, right? And so you would think they would have kind of gamed this one out to know that this is something that could have happened yeah. so that before they released it, they put proper protocols in place. This is not the first time. When, when Twitter re Twitter had verifications off for years yeah. to verify your account. Yeah. And when they turned it back on, they were inundated with requests. Yeah. And it shut down their system for a good while. Yeah. So, I mean, this is not the first time they've added a new policy change and then people have overwhelmed their <laughs> I, system. I, I, I feel sorry for the people who are reviewing it because I bet, I just bet their inbox has got to be huge. I, I, said, I said, I don't think it's people. You think it's just the AI? There is no way Twitter can employ the mass amount of people to review every single report. Oh, uh, it's it's yeah. going to be automated. Yeah. It's it's if enough. 
like many social networks, if enough people report something as in violation of TOS, right. they're going to take action automatically. And we've seen that used for good and for bad. Gotcha. This is obviously a case where it is being used. Gotcha. So very interesting. Uh, we'll but see what happens. This with is a that. good prediction. We nailed that last week. We nailed it right away. And it took it took less than a week for it to happen, right? Yeah. So, eh, interesting. Call it. Yeah, call it. <laughs> and that's our show this week. Very cool. Thank you all so quick much show, for tuning quick in. Quick show, quick show, quick uh, show. This is kind of the last week we have for presentations, although I think we're sneaking in two for next Monday. Yeah. But, uh, and then we're taking our Christmas break, and then we're back full speed ahead in starting in January. But we're still going to be doing these every week, right? Or are we taking uh, We will off? take probably a couple of weeks off, most likely, oh, okay. for the winter break. All right. Um, but we'll be back in January. Probably do one more show, I think, and then we'll be back in January. Sounds good. All righty. So on behalf of myself, I'm Darren. And Brandon. Thank you all so much. Have a great we'll rest of the day, everybody. Time. Bye. See ya.